But taking responsibility for keeping our graduates here and for attracting talent to the state is a different story altogether. This part of the strategic plan represents a dramatic departure in the way we think of higher education, which has always considered its job pretty much over once the graduate is out the door. Instead, we blame economic, social, personal factors beyond the control of schools for the decisions that students, businesses, and often even faculty make about where to locate. Our plan rejects that excuse. Instead, we accept that keeping our graduates here and serving as a magnet for highly educated people to come to Ohio is now part of our core business. We made this decision for two reasons. First, we really do believe that a high quality system of higher education can and should affect where talented people choose to live. But we also made the decision out of pure necessity, out of survival, if you will. If we graduate more students, but they leave the state, and we do not attract others to replace them, the leaders of this state will simply not have the money to support higher education, even if they wanted to. And I highly doubt that they would want to generously support a system whose major function is to train the workforce for other states. How do we keep students here in Ohio after they graduate? Well, one way is to offer more co-ops and internship programs linking students to Ohio businesses while they are still in school. Such relationships frequently lead to full-time employment after graduation. That's why I was so pleased to see the jobs bill that was passed by the state legislature this week. It provides $250 million over five years for co-ops and internships, which will allow us to keep more of our graduates here. Now, time and again in the past year, I've had the frustrating experience of listening to students complain about the lack of job opportunities in Ohio, and then sometimes moments later, have an employer tell me of his inability to find the kinds of workers he needs. This game of chicken and egg must stop. We will not sit by and hope that our graduates and employers find each other. We will bring them together with well-organized, well-funded, collaborative programs. We also keep our graduates here by creating an entrepreneurial environment on our campuses to help generate new and exciting career possibilities for graduates and to build stimulating and attractive neighborhoods around our campuses that make students want to stay. Our plan calls for a broad effort to stimulate this type of growth on and around our campuses, not just a narrow effort to increase the number of businesses growing out of the research conducted at our universities, what we typically call tech transfer. We will also attract talent and businesses to this state by building academic and research programs of national and international renown. That's why our plan requires each institution within the University System of Ohio to not only provide a comprehensive quality education to its students, but to also build centers of excellence that are measured against externally verifiable benchmarks. The announcement just last week of our investment of $143.5 million in 26 new endowed faculty positions called Ohio Research Scholars is an important first step in this regard and the largest single investment of this type in the state of Ohio in decades. Launched through a partnership with the Third Frontier, the faculty members we recruit will deepen our expertise in growing areas of intellectual strength that are closely linked to important industry clusters in the state. They will in turn keep and attract students and faculty and help create business opportunities for existing companies and startups alike. In short, our colleges and universities are vast reservoirs of intellectual innovation and excitement. But our goal is not just to improve our colleges and universities. Our goal is to use a world-class system of higher education to improve the state as a whole. For this reason, I will continue to focus my attention on the role and success of the public universities in Northeast Ohio. Among these universities, there are many fine programs doing an outstanding job of serving Northeast Ohio students and industries. In fact, I've already mentioned that uh, the University of Akron, Kent State, and neo UCOM each received endowed chairs in the competition uh, leading up to the Ohio Research Scholars Program. 
But if I told you that I thought we were doing all that we should be doing in public higher education in Northeast Ohio, I would be lying. To me, the real test is this. Is Northeast Ohio a growing, vibrant economy? Is it successfully competing for talent and investment against the most innovative regions in the world? If not, and we know what the answer is, then public higher education must and will do more. Last year, I referred to the then ongoing work of the study commission that was set up to evaluate public higher education in Northeast Ohio. That commission issued its report in December, and we're moving on implementing its recommendations. Legislation passed this week establishing an independent board of trustees for neo UCOM and adding Cleveland State to the consortium of schools, which already included the University of Akron, Kent State, and Youngstown State, that sends students to that school. The new board of neo UCOM will also make it easier to expand the school's presence across the region, including future possibility of adding facilities in Akron and Cleveland. And we're also well on our way to extending community college education to the Mahoning Valley, the only area of the state that doesn't currently provide a comprehensive community college education for its citizens. This was another recommendation of the commission. While I accept responsibility for implementing the commission's report, I intend to go further. The commission, by its very structure, could not pursue the clear differentiation of missions between the four universities and neo UCOM. The strategic plan does, however, address this, these issues. I will be convening an annual meeting of the trustees of all the public institutions in Northeast Ohio to review our progress, and will be making an annual report to the governor and the General Assembly on this critical issue to the region's economy. Together with this focus on public higher education, we will continue to support the profoundly important work of the region's private colleges and universities. We are committed to the continued growth and excellence of the research enterprise at Case Western Reserve University, and we are proud that they won three endowed faculty positions in the Research Scholars Competition. President Barbara Snyder is doing an outstanding job, and she has our full support. As I've mentioned in the past, one only needs to look to the Silicon Valley or the Research Triangle in North Carolina to understand the profound impact of combining the resources and reach of great public and private institutions in the same region. Case also less led or participated in several of the successful Choose Ohio First scholarship proposals, as did Baldwin Wallace College and Ursuline College. Well, as you can tell, I'm, I'm pretty pleased by the progress we've made in the past year. But all of our work could have been at risk a few months ago when Governor Strickland was forced to cut $733 million in budget from the budget as a result of the slowing economy. In the past, when governors faced similar crises, higher education was cut early, deep, and often. This time was different. Governor Strickland exempted higher education from the cuts and made it clear that he was doing so because he believed the investments made in higher education in this budget are vital to the future of the state. As much as I commend the governor and the leaders of the House and Senate for their unwavering commitment to higher education, I should note in the history, in the interests of historical accuracy, that we are not the first in the history of our state to understand the value of higher education. Our first college, Ohio University, was literally carved from the wilderness in 1804, when the state was barely a year old. Miami University became only the seventh public college in America when it was founded in 1809. During the 19th century, a rich tapestry of private institutions, many established by religious denominations, were also created. Indeed, the Catholic Church, or one of its orders, is alone responsible for founding 12 colleges, or universities in Ohio. The Ohio Agricultural and Mechanical College, later to become known as the Ohio State University, opened its doors to students in 1873. And in 1878, 130 years ago, the General Assembly began making regular appropriations for public colleges and universities. The General Assembly declared in 1913 that every high school graduate in Ohio was entitled to enroll in a state college. And as I mentioned earlier, our state leaders 40 years ago launched a major effort to build community colleges across the state. The point is, what we are doing today by investing in higher education does not represent a new direction for our Ohio. Rather, 
We are reclaiming our heritage of leadership in higher education.